there to say there's going to be another one on there. You know who these people are. Skippy Chef is, of course, one of the most amazing individuals on the circuit. Uh, he's been so many films, pure films in the actually. Uh, most of us, uh, actually, last year we showed a film of hers. I'm going to do a catch on this. Yeah. Free Bird! <laughs> Free shut, Bird! Shut up back there. Uh, <laughs> Dude, go sit. Oh, wait, no one's at your table because they're all in here. Oh! oh. Played last year, it actually won best uh, best picture last year. Nightmare Man. It just got picked up for the festival of uh, the After Dark. After Dark Film Fest, eight films to die for. That's like 700 screens. So look at her now before her price goes up because I may not be able to bring her in anymore. <laughs> yeah, don't watch it. Absolutely. It's like it's like November. You got like November 11th or something like 17. Like ten days. Ten days. Ten days. So. That's so She's amazing, and uh, I will say this real quick. The terminology screen queen really doesn't mean that anymore. They're, it's not really about screen queens. It's so much more as far as actresses go. And I'll bring up this other one too. Jennifer DeLora, Star Frank in the third, Deranged. One of my favorite 80s movies, uh, Young Nurses in Love. That doesn't make you feel old. One of my favorite 80s movies. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm old. I'm old. I would be the oldest person at this table. Thank you very much. Well, they're going to take it away. Ask any question you like. Come up to the mic and go for it. It's wild and crazy. They will probably answer all of them. Oh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Give them a big hand. Thank you. Mom, get it up, folks. So, Frank and Hunger. Was it the title that drew you to it? Was it the character? The director? The director? Frank Dynamata. Great damage. Yeah. All that stuff. Had, had you worked with him before? No, he was a fan of mine. No way, so you didn't even have to audition or anything. No, but I had done like 20 films before that, so. So how many movies would you say you've done? Over 40. 40? And then I've got a whole other part of my career that nobody in this genre cares about. Like two Emmys. Yeah, four. I wish. Because they care about that. I don't know. 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 I've got uh, now television. I've a regular on children's series for PBS. So you go from Frank and Hunter playing a deaf man on a children's series. Deaf man? Uh huh. No, that was on a movie of the week. I played deaf librarian on a children's series. Well, so I got an Emmy for that. I'm deaf. Are you? Mm -hmm. No way. Totally deaf in this year. I'm deaf in this year with hearing aids, hard hearing. So I can scream as loud as I want. What? <laughs> 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 but I'm not dumb. I have two PhDs. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, just because I don't know, what what was your first movie? My first movie was Bad Girls Dormitory. Oh. And I did that, and then I got a six and a half second top of scene. And I didn't even have these titties then, so it was really short and really long. <laughs> um, and then I went off and back and went and did Broadway and everything. That was what I'd done before. And uh, then I won Miss New York State, and they decided that I was too much of a hoe for them. And they decided to send me a letter saying that you, you know, your, your contract says you, you haven't done anything indecent, immodest, and moral, and bad taste. Excuse me, that's the way I live my life. Um, and I didn't think there was anything wrong with them. An actor, they wanted to be in a sweatsuit. So they sent me the letter saying to avoid negative publicity, please give up the crown. And I was like, kiss my ass, I earned it. I want talent, I want this congeniality, I don't want the freaking crown. No, it's not happening. Did they have someone come to your house like, oh, yeah, no, they had to get the fucking crown. They came with a search, uh. search warrant. That's all. I did on my parents' bed. I still have a crown. And I closed some penthouse floor with it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care. That was the way getting back in. So that's how I got started, and that's how I kind of got, like, well known, and then after that it was just like I got phone calls and I was on the contract with Vincent, and then just went from there. It was all. So 40, 40 movies later, and uh, and now now you're at these conventions doing your thing. Are you, are you still active in movies? Mm -hmm. I'm doing one so what's called the Ghost one? Camera. I'm doing one right now called Ghost Camera. With it's actually the last one that Yvonne Carlo did right before she died. So we've got the run going already, and now we're doing the rest of it, which is really cool. And I've got to do a commercial. I do other things too. Commercial and filming Wednesday and Thursday when I get back to the TV to LA. Um, that song's got to be right. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What's up with you now? Nothing. I was just talking to them that my movie Niagara Man got picked up for the eight films Which is awesome. for 700 fucking theaters, so you guys better go at least see it. Yeah. At least. least. <laughs> and, uh, and I just did a film with Lance Henderson and Ed Furlong. Awesome. Oh. It was 
Yes, yes, you can get it too. I think I'm on this bit. I'm in the middle of a panel bit. Uh, you are in a panel right now, say hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, darling, what are you doing? special effects artists that you've had work on. Oh. Okay, well, I have a movie called Blade Murder 2. And the effect, like, Blade Murder 2 one sucked ass. It's like the worst <laughs> movie ever made, sort of got it. Anyone see it? Yeah, yeah. It's horrible, right? You're right. I mean, it's fucking terrible. Anyway, Blade Murder 2 was not the greatest movie, but compared to Blade Murder 1, it's <laughs> 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 So, uh, we had this dude on there, his name was Tom. I don't remember who his company was, but his name was Tom. He was great. He was fucking crazy. And he started emailing me. So you guys have a lot of time with him. You fit in well with my food. Okay. 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 But yeah, he started emailing me recently. And I was just like, hey, it's Tom, I'm a special effects guy. I'm like, all right, man, you know, nice to talk to you. What do you mean? I'm fucking replying to this email. Like, yeah. <laughs> And it's like one fucking oh my God. sentence <laughs> in each email. And it's over, so he's out of his head. And uh, the soda effects guys are amazing. They were fun. Mine by far gave our notes. Gave some shitload of films. He did Frank Hooker. And he had to take all of Hooker and all the characters and he had to get molded, which is straight. And I'm claustrophobic, which is not fun for me. Get straws up your nose and get cast in your entire body so that, because we blew up. Looking like smoke and stuff wasn't bloody. And he did all of that, and then he took them and made these foam dummies out of them. And if you see the extras on the new release, the re release of Frank Hunter, I show all the backstage pictures and everything in my, in my uh, collection. And it was frightening. When I went to do my scene where I had to blow up, he had, he had to match the dummies. like, you know, here, here. You know, I mean, it was, it was a lot. You had to match the dummy. They went to the same shop at the time I was wearing crystals. It was in those days. Um, so I had crystals. I had to tell them where I got my crystals. They molded our teeth for teeth. They got the same kind of contacts for the eyes. I mean, it was frightening. Frightening. They, they copied my tattoo to a T. Wow. And everything. So you, I went to go into the room, and I, I, I thought I was looking in a mirror as I went to the door. And then I realized that I hadn't opened the door yet. And I'm like, I opened it up, and there's the dummy, and I have pictures of it. The, I mean, everything, the boobs, everything that they did was absolutely wow. For everybody. Everybody's, and I have pictures of other people, too. It's like, whoa, really frightening. Well, actually, I, I got to work not being molded <coughs> or anything by Rick Baker recently on that oh. same movie, Dark Real, who of course Henderson and Tony Todd and everybody. I get to kill him. 
and uh, in a sword fight, which is kind of ironic because I didn't have somebody recently. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I had a sword fight with Rick Baker, and, and he was taking his talk to me because I went a little too far. <laughs> but, but that was still pretty cool. It's like, even though I wasn't doing effects on anything, just even say I was in a movie with Rick Baker. It's rad. We have to work together because I did all that stuff with the swords in three movies. Is that right? And real, real I'm really great with sword music. <laughs> 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 Seriously. See, you guys heard it first. <laughs> I didn't have a, a, a fright actor, fright house too. I had to go all the way up the staircase and then back down the staircase. Is that right? Staircase, all the sword, and this the guy, because you always get somebody who's like, doesn't listen to the directions. So every time you're supposed to be up, he was shooting down. I was literally fucked for my life. I nearly knocked you out the fucking window. I was like, I've had it by like flight two. I was like, you're out of here. Boom. I was like, duh. Boom, and I went right over his head. He's like, I can't do this. Chris and Madison going back down in a G-string. Fight with swords and crap, naked. And then in *Brother Holocaust*, I did it all in a fur king. Yeah, well, when, village when, to build those tits. That, when, after that is when I needed. I knew I needed to get my tits done. It took three hours every day just to build my tits for that thing. Uh, that a couple thousand dollars was better than that. And then mine, now I knew I never paid for. They were twenty years old. Just seven. They had a little. <laughs> they were twenty. Anybody else have any other questions? Anybody? I know you want to right there. I know you do. I can <laughs> see you want to. Not you. I'm talking the guy behind you. Yeah, you. Me? No. Come on, Michael. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Watch out. Too dangerous. Um, if we want to get you in a movie, like an ind independent film, how do we go about it? Pay me. <laughs> 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 Just don't even need a script. No, no <laughs> script. <laughs> well, no, thank you. Because I don't trust you. Doesn't check clears in the mail. The best thing about show business if you don't know about it is, you know, I'm doing this movie. I'm working on this. I'm working on it. It's all a bunch of crap until it's done. Check is cleared. And sometimes even then, films end up on the shelf. So okay. But now, me, it's like until the check clears and my ass is on the set, it's not happening. Because yeah. it's not. So is it all about the money, or what do you look for in, no, screen, in I mean, screenplays? I, I, I make a lot of jokes about it, yeah. Do I? Uh, no, I mean, like, I'll read, I'll read most scripts if, you can, if I talk to you, and I'm pretty sure your project's going to happen. I, I got really sick and tired of reading scripts. You know, I get, like, 30 a month at the house, 29 of which are never, ever going to be made because dude's still living in his mom's basement and asking her if he can have some change to hire Tiffany Shepard. <laughs> you know? And, and, and it's just, it's just a big waste of my fucking time. I'm not a good reader. I'm not that smart. So, you know, if I'm pretty certain you're going to make it, I'll read it, you know, and then, you know, we can talk money. And if something's really, really cool, you know, obviously I'll cut breaks. Can't do anything for free anymore just because I know what what gets things distributed. And it's, you know, actors that work a lot, people that do PR stuff for you, and it's like, I'll promote the fuck out of your movie. I don't care what it is, you know. Even if it's bad, I'll tell you how shitty it is. You've got to go, oh, I've got to see that now. You know, so, um, you know it, there's, there's a lot of factors into it. Where you shoot it? You know, some I want to go, oh, do I love Iowa? You know? Um, <laughs> you know, it just depends. <laughs> I'm like a second suit map. I'm pretty easy going. It really depends, because I do so much television work, and other stuff like that. You know, I've, if I can get, like, if you want, you want to get the, the face on the poster, your name on the poster, you want to get copies of the DVD, you want to, you know, you get all that stuff taken care of, and, you know, slap me, you know, some pizza and some coffee, and take care of me, and that kind of stuff, and, you know, I want to do it, I'm going to do it. I, mean, I did a student film after I'd done, like, or I think, like, 25 films. I, the script was brilliant. It was a role I had never gotten to play yet. I got to do this great student film, and this is what was now a professional director, wow. you know, and then I got to executive produce one for USC which is really cool. So, you know, I, I just, I love to work. I love the fact that I, I'm always working. So when I get to do the bigger budget films, and you know, in, I call this trailer trash, because all you do is sit around in the trailer and yeah. waste a lot of people's money, Absolutely. as opposed to doing low budget films where everybody's <coughs> working and it's exciting, you know, Never going, 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 and yeah. everybody gets close. And it's like, I know, I'm still friends with people I've worked with, you know, a thousand years ago, well, not a thousand, not that old, but, you know, 20 some odd, probably things that uh, but um, yeah, so if I, if I like it and I want to do it, or I like you and I want to do it, you know, and I love doing that kind of stuff because you can, you know, just bounce. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can tell you, I mean, like if you are, and I think you are, Michael, an aspiring filmmaker, or a filmmaker, <laughs> aspiring to have me in the movie. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, and the only thing I can say is just have, have your shit together before you, before you contact somebody. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I have these fuckers that contacted me a week ago. Well, you know, I watched your movie in, in, we're shooting in Toronto and, and I heard you like Toronto. <laughs> okay. You know, and then, you know, like, 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 oh, this is in Indiana, I'll go there. Oh, okay. No, Idaho. Idaho. Iowa. 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 <laughs> Iowa. So, um, you know, but like, you know, it's going on and on and on and on. I said, I don't want to listen to all this. I mean, it's good. Oh, we need a brand new year. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't approach people like that. Because right. it's, it is a waste of time. But then when you finally have it written, I'm going to be like, all right, dude, fuck. Whatever. And okay, you know, I'll still read it, but it might take me another two months as opposed to being like, oh, I'm like, I can't wait. I'm excited. You know, it's just. Because people, you know, it's just like you, you know, if like I'm calling you and saying, yeah, 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 I want to do your movie, I want to do your movie, and then I go, oh, fuck you, I'm sorry, I don't have your time, actually, I'm booked until next June. And then why'd you waste my time? So, you know, not like you asked for my advice, but it is. No! Is there a role or a character you just have always just really wanted to you know, get into? I have never played a vampire. And I don't know why. I have never. Isn't that stupid? We both are great vampires. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> and uh, and I, I well I did just play a vampire sort of kind of. Okay, now you lie. Shut, shut up. Shut up. Lying. Shut up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I just sort of got it, but not a real vampire. It was at the end of the movie. You're like, oh, she's a vampire. Yeah. yeah. That's a little vampire. Up. And I got bit by a vampire. But he never seemed to turn. I want to play a fucking vampire from start to finish. Suck this dude's blood like oh my, and I want to suck blood like in one spit and where the bitch bites him. That's the days of cute young boys. Huh? Vampire version of uh, Lorena Bobbitt. Oh, <laughs> 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 huh? I got a question. Uh, All right. So <laughs> tell us about. <laughs> tell us about your, even if you don't remember the person's name, your most favorite fan, like the best fan you had come up to, and the worst. <laughs> because you know it's all about the fans. That's loaded. I know. You don't have to say names. Don't do that. Just, you know. Well, there was this one fat chick once. Her, her name was Anissa. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's the best one. <laughs> um, my best fan. Everybody, man. It's like, and I'm not even just saying it's like if I didn't love doing conventions and meet people, I wouldn't be here. You know, you don't make. I mean, well, granted, you love like, them all, but like, does one stand out? I can out? tell you about the crazy one. Stands out. Okay. I can tell you about the crazy one. There's a lot more of those. There's a lot more of those. I had a guy. He called himself Dark Angel. I went down at home. At the gate of my house. With buzzer, and they said, hey, it's so and so from Dark Delicacies. Dark Delicacies, if anyone. It's a really, really awesome book story. You should go in here and say hi to Bill and what to do and buy a bunch of shit. Um, shit in this book. Uh, and uh, he says, from Dark Galaxy. So, so I, I, you know, I always sign stuff to them over there. Yeah, so it's it's so it's like, oh, Dark Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And I put some in, and it's this big you know, dude in the heart with his shirt. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. And I'm like, what's up? And I'm like, oh, what you got for me? He's like, I'm so happy you're home. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, right, well, yeah, no one called me and told me you're coming, man, but it's, it's cool. And he's like, Driven by the Fordish crowd, <laughs> waiting to see your truck pull into the driveway. And I have my daughter in my hand. I've got this part. I have my daughter in my hand with a year old at the time. And I'm looking at my pocket and I'm like, oh, I'm going to stab this fat pocket. And it ends up, you know, I, I played it really cool, you know, like, man, man, I'm so happy you're here, but you know, I can't wait to buy it. It's my husband. He's really big and black. Did I mention he's Ken Foray? And he'll kick your ass. And uh, I finally was able to like usher him out, you know, and he's like outside my gate and then like still talking and I hear him in my house and just standing oh, that's there pretty and wild and shit. And, and that was pretty creepy. So that, that Dark Angel must be my creepiest weird thing. Yeah. Dark Angel. That was his name, Dark Angel. And then here's the best part about it. So I I I, I, I go on my message board a lot, which is w dash com And um, and I was chatting about it. <laughs> And, uh, and you know, and I, I go on there. I'm talking about this guy, Dark Angel, and uh, he writes on the fucking message board that he's some Christian something or another, and he's going to rid the world of evil 
Carl would be sluts like me because all he wanted to do was be a nice, kind soul and meet me, and I had the nerve to talk about him. I'm like, bitch, you came to my house. You came to show up on my property. What the fuck do you think I'm gonna do, you asshole? I mean, seriously. Have you had any crazy ones? Yeah. I, have, I have some in New York. Are you cutting us off? Speaking of crazy, the time has flown by.